Thanks, Scott. It's nice to be here again. Another busy day, busy week for the markets. You got that right. What's your reaction here to what the Fed did and what Powell said? Powell's getting pretty good at uh, uh, scripting. Well, it's not really a script, but conducting these uh, press conferences after the meetings. He starts out, and this is like the third time in a row, but I, I'm, not, I'm often critical of Fed officials. I think Jay had one of his best press conferences today. He started out with a, with a stick. Basically, it's essential we bring inflation down. We need to bring inflation down. We must bring inflation down. And then he starts to get more dovish as he goes along. And he starts to say things that are reassuring to the markets. And uh, he ends up uh, talking the markets up and, frankly, changing the sentiment, I feel like. Not only did stocks do well uh, during and after the press conference, but we saw some real action in the bond market as well. We've been having a lot of volatility in the credit markets. June was a terrible month for the high-yield bond market and the emerging markets. And then we've had a pretty strong rebound in particularly corporate bonds and uh, the high-yield bond market. And they really got second wind uh, after the press conference today. I, I think that we have an interesting situation now where markets are priced cheaply enough, thanks to all of what's happened in the past few months, where you're at a starting point for certain parts of the credit market, and I'd certainly say for some of the riskier parts of the stock market, where you're from a starting point where the valuation is uh, such that the uh, possibility of good returns, I'm not talking about in a month, but good returns over a six to 12 month horizon have significantly improved. And I think one of the things that was really important was that we didn't get this, this forward guidance stuff so much as in the past. There was a guest prior to uh, Powell's, uh, uh, to the minutes being released and the, and the interest rate hike, there were people saying that they were hoping that we would get more guidance. And I wrote down in my notes, no, just the opposite. Because this guidance is what cost the, cred, the Fed credibility in the past, kind of, kind of promising certain things and promising that certain things wouldn't happen, and then right. events changed and they had to make them happen. And that didn't happen this time. In fact, they even hmm. said meeting by meeting, which that's I don't right. think that's a phrase I've heard in a long time. And I like that meeting by meeting. That's what I want. I don't want the Fed to make silly things that are based on backward-looking data, make a commitment to something, and then, and then have all uh, expectations have to be reset. So I thought, I thought that was pretty good. So uh, all in all, uh, I actually think this market reaction seems less of a sugar high than the prior two uh, in uh, June and May. It's interesting. Wow. I was talking about uh, Judge a little bit facetiously a couple of months ago. They should just, just raise 200 and get it over with. And now yeah, we have or, raised paint, 200, you know, you said, you, not all at you once. Said, you, you said paint or get off the ladder. Uh, take Fed funds rate to 3% right. now is what you told me the, the last time you were on. Now they've done 75 back to back. That's pretty aggressive. That's right. Well, they're, they're, they're painting. I mean, uh, they're still on the ladder, but they're actually making progress on the job. And so I, th I think that's a good thing. So what's important now is actually the Fed has to understand, and, and Jay said this pretty clearly, that these things have a lagged effect. And so now that we've, in under three months, moved 200 basis points, we need to wait and see to a certain extent. I'm glad there's eight weeks before the next meeting because we'll get two full data sets uh, by then, and that'll give us a lot more clarity. One thing that I think uh, people don't talk about, and I didn't hear anything about it anywhere today, and didn't come out of Jay, is how much the money printing was responsible for all these dislocations and for the inflation rate. And unfortunately, I believe if when the, an economic downturn comes that's of significance, and this is what the Fed wants to avoid, a downturn of significance, because I think they understand that we're probably going to print more money again. And so ironically, if you want to have less inflation long term, you want to really avoid weirdly overdoing it now and causing that more steep recession. So I heard Jay Powell say a couple of things fairly concisely, and I applaud him for that. First of all, he acknowledged that two and a half is the neutral rate, basically. And he acknowledged that the bond market path that he has now followed, and I've been critical in past meetings, particularly before they started liftoff, that they need to follow the two-year. Well, since the last meeting, now that they've gone 150 in six weeks, the two-year Treasury yield is down 50 basis points. 
and the mm -hmm. Fed funds rate is up 150 basis points. So there's a 200 basis point swing there. So the Fed is no longer behind the curve. And I think they have to understand that, and I think they do. I think that's what came, came away and why the markets are probably more sustainably uh, calmed down by this. They, I think they I'm understand almost, that... To, 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 go ahead. I was going to say, I'm almost stunned to hear you say what you're saying.